All right, welcome back Island Hoppers. Today we're gonna explore Vienna, Austria. We're gonna take a look at the world's most livable city here. We're gonna do a travel guide going to some of the palaces, checking out some of the history with the music, eat some good food. Let's get into it. What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Vienna, Austria. Right here in the city center, we're gonna go around show you guys what it's like down here look at that amazing cathedrals amazing music amazing art all around Vienna a city with 1.8 million people And in the metro area, 2.8 million. It's considered the most livable city in the world. We're gonna show you guys around as we continue to walk and talk. So most livable city now, eight years, I believe. Passed up um, Melbourne, Australia. Super busy down here, super busy. I just arrived on a train from Prague. If you guys haven't seen that video, you should. Prague's an amazing place, but Vienna is too. Obviously, it's the most livable city, making it basically the best city in the world, which you're looking at here. We gotta find out why, though. You know, Mozart, Beethoven, they all felt inspired to make great music that people heard around the world from here. So I'll pick up as we get closer to some other sites. I'm staying in the Hotel Bristol. Let me show you that room actually right now. All right, well, I figured if I'm gonna to come to Vienna, I might as well stay downtown. And I wanted to use my membership points. So this is what they gave me. Uh, it actually cost me $200, but it's a $600 room probably a bit intense but it's Marriott signature collection and I figured hey it's right in the middle of it all which is exactly where I want to be I could step out here let's see what happens when I go up here and I look down oh yeah right up top buddy I think I'm on the top of the building here so yeah this is a $600 room for 200 bucks because I have that Marriott Bonvoy, which I keep telling you guys, hit me up if you want something, if you want to know the tricks to how I do it. It's not really a trick, but I can tell you exactly what you need to do. Anyway, let's go out and explore now. So I'm actually pretty hungry. I'm going to try and find some place to eat. What you guys think of that room though? Okay. It is food time. Let's see what kind of food we got. Maybe I'll just go to my hotel and get it. Nah. We got too many restaurants down here. I just gotta find something that's more my vibe. Whatever that means, right? What's my vibe? I don't know. I'm in Austria. I'd say probably something that's not too crowded, to be honest with you. Anything not crowded with the steak is good for me. I do like steak. Seems like I've been eating a lot of kebab. Maybe I need to just head to Turkey already and Israel and those places down south. Ah, Switzerland. I was just there. The last time I was here, this is my second time to Vienna. Uh, from here I went to Zurich on the train. But this time I'm going towards Budapest. Busy, busy, busy. I hear something sizzling. 
Nord Sea. Nord is north. Sea. Nord Sea. I got a glass of wine here. I'm in an Italian restaurant actually. And I think I'm getting some seafood. And that's what I got. Some shrimp and some sauce. Wow, it looks great, huh? So we got carpaccio. It is uh, cooked mushrooms with raw beef. Very interesting. Okay. All right, so we're back in the old town square. It's a little bit later now. It's actually nine o'clock. So we're just kind of cruising through here at 9 p.m. It's actually a lot more tame than it was earlier. So that's amazing. I was hoping it would get a lot more pumping like, you know, what you see in New York at Times Square. But the later in the evening it is, the less busy it becomes. That's good enough. We got some bubble waffles. Look at those bubble waffles. And the chef is doing great. It's not an easy job to serve hundreds of thousands of people. Yearly, probably. Anyway. This here is called Steffel 2. It's like a mall. I saw earlier they had the elevator going up and down and it makes it look kind of cool. I mean, this is basically like the Times Square of Vienna. I was trying to show the jewelry, but I moved too fast. Sir Anthony. These are like little shopping center malls. It's Wednesday. Oh. What do we got in here? I'm halfway tempted to tap into my bar in my room. It's just so convenient. Got a shot glass and everything. Still have not found my luggage. So... I don't have much room to buy souvenirs right now. <laughs> well, on the subject of my bag that's been missing since Stockholm, Sweden, uh, on this tour I've now gone to 12 countries. So that's a lot of countries. Uh, since I left Stockholm, I've been to Finland. Uh, let's see where else. Estonia. Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, and now Austria. So I'm basically without my luggage. What I've done is now officially transitioned away from cold weather clothes. I got rid of my last pair of pants. It was a nice pair of pants. Actually, all my pairs of pants that I've had to toss were nice, I just didn't have room for them because now I'm wearing shorts. And the bag that I have is already really heavy. Between clothes, a laptop, and hygiene stuff, and I mean, it's not too heavy, but when you're walking a couple miles in it to get from a train station to a city center with two blisters on your feet, it's not ideal. Seriously, especially when it gets hot. People will say, oh, you gotta man up. <laughs> or why don't you take an Uber or take a taxi? That's a good idea. I don't know, I sometimes I just like to walk it because I like to get a feel for the city by just like walking it from the bus station or train station or wherever to the city center or my hotel. I do ride taxis every once in a while though. If I'm like more than a couple miles away. But, all's good. So tomorrow we're going to actually do a lot of exploring around here. All the non-evening uh, stuff. So the stuff that's closed right now, we'll be checking out tomorrow. I mean, I'm not going to probably come back down here. Uh, although there's a lot to see down there. I've done a video down here before. But... I really want to check out the Belvedere. There's some stuff over here where the Albertina is. Um, lots to check out down here, but 
the daytime stuff, you know? The Donab River waterfront area. We'll see. So I came to the bar down here and I got a glass of Merlot, but this is the bar setting. Very nice, huh? All right, it's the next day. And as I mentioned previously, Musical City, but look at the big bus. Let's do the big bus tour today. It's uh, 35 US dollars, thereabouts, 35 euros. Here is Franz Josef building here. All right, so we are in front of the Albertina. This is a great museum to go to learn about Austria. And here's the big bus tour, which we're actually doing. It's 35 euros. Current temperature outside is 23 degrees Celsius. That's 73 degrees. This fountain here is interesting because it represents the rivers of Austria. That's the Danube, the big one. But yeah, so we're going to do the big bus tour, see where they take us and what's going on. They got Monet, Picasso here at the Albertina. A nice look up top. I am actually changing hotels today because it is a new day. I just found out that Budapest is having a Grand Prix. Average hotel price over there right now is four to five hundred dollars this weekend, so that's not just hearsay, that's what I actually saw online when I looked. <laughs> Incredible. And we're off. The State Opera House. All right, we are arriving here at the Shangbrun Palace. This is actually considered the top thing to do here in Vienna. Empress Maria Theresa turned this into a summer home palace for her family. There's a lot of interesting history to understand about Austria. As you know, it used to be part of the Roman Empire, then it changed hands, became a part of Austria-Hungary. Then it was conquered by the Nazis for a short period. Very interesting history. But uh, the Habsburg family are the ones who really built up the Austrian Empire, which extended all the way towards Spain and even Burgundy, which is where Paris, France is located. Now, I'll just like to say something interesting about Maria Theresa. You guys can Google her or look her up. Empress Maria Theresa from the Austria-Hungarian Empire. She was uh, very well liked by the people, but she loved food a lot. And they actually built a ramp for her <laughs> called Bella Air, which is essentially beautiful air because she did like to get fresh air, but she was too big, so they had to build the ramp. That's Maria Teresa. All right, anyway, so we're here at this palace. I'm gonna head out there to the gardens. It's getting hot today. They say it's gonna be approaching 30 degrees Celsius, around 82, 85 degrees. It's not too bad right now, but it's starting to warm up for sure. So here we are in the little garden here at the palace. Got these, uh, those clementines. There's some oranges or grapefruit maybe. I don't think those are limes. Totally shaded by these vines here. 
incredible. I've never seen anything like that. Total shade. Kind of reminds me of the Palace of Versailles. So the Ottoman Turks, I believe, destroyed part of this palace or one of these palaces in like a siege in 1700s. And uh, they had to remodel and rebuild a lot of this. But the Turkish were definitely taking chunks of the Roman Empire when they could. So at this location they also have a zoo, which is considered the oldest zoo in the world. But also, you can see Maria Teresa right up there, her name, and Joseph Oh man, impressive, huh? There's that. Man, these trees make perfect tunnels of shade. And you can see. The structure I was telling you about is an obelisk. And I've noticed they're everywhere. All across Europe. There's something about an obelisk that obviously dates back to the Egyptians. They have one in Washington, D.C. Great views. Look, this is a statue of Neptune. That real marble. Okay. What do we have here? Yes. Nice. Oh wow, they got a labyrinth here. What's this labyrinth all about? Oh, you gotta pay to get in? I'm good on that. Beautiful place though. Look up top of the hill there. Drove for a hike. Reminds me of the Belvedere actually a little bit, which is uh, more central. Gardens for days. One of the things I like about Europe is the uh, citrus that grows everywhere. Same with the flowers. All right, now we have arrived at the Belvedere Palace. It's another famous palace here. And I'm not gonna go inside because I know that if I do too many palaces, you guys are gonna be like, all right, enough with the palaces, show us some other stuff. But I will walk this route back into the old town. See, they do have a museum here at the Belvedere. And if you don't get over to the other palace that we were just at, this one will do just fine. Because it is quite amazing in and of itself. As you can see. Last time I was in Vienna, this is the one I came to. So they got some crane going. I've actually got to change my uh, hotel. It's kind of why I'm in a hurry to get back over there. It's going to be a cheaper room too. I think this room was $130 a night, the one that I'm staying at this time. Yeah. 
and it's still in the city center. Belvedere, baby. Oh, Mr. Belvedere. You can definitely tell that I'm in the southern part of Europe. Actually, this area of Europe is called the Heart of Europe. I'm actually not too far away from the Balkans at this point. I'm closer to the Balkans than I am to the Baltic. Yeah, on an incredibly hot day, something like that is just mist in the air. Very nice. People just kind of hanging around around the nice fountain. All right. So here we are at the Karl Ischke, and uh, they've got a live band playing, I guess. A cappella. Not quite Kid Leroy, but you know, gets the crowd going. Actually, there is no crowd. So she's just literally singing for whatever reason. Maybe it's just a test. All right, we've made it back to the Bristol Hotel here. Lots of action going on. Still not absolutely convinced why this is the best city in the world. I mean, it's nice, but I think I've seen a few better. But then again, you know, some of these publications are a bit uh, one-sided. It's a nice city, though. I just think, like, Montreal is better, Toronto probably, Vancouver, New York. Stuff like that. Okay, friends, we've arrived at Hotel Royal, the new hotel. So I was at Hotel Bristol, I'm at Hotel Royal. Let's see how this works. Oh, no. Okay, so here's the $125 a night hotel right in the city center. One of these kind of beds, interesting. I don't know if they have AC in here, but it's really loud outside here. <laughs> there we are, right outside, next to the center. Okay, so we are back downtown in the city center, and we're going to go check out this cathedral, walk by it, and head to the river, the Danab River. Amazing, huh? Well, let's go inside here. You guys did request if the cathedral was spectacular to go in, so let's give it a, let's give it a whirl. Entrance. Uh, <clears throat> are they doing a service? Okay. Whoa. Well, it's an impressive cathedral, that's for sure, inside and out. Looks like these horses here. Horses are also very impressive. <laughs> so cool. I like horses. We're just kind of cruising this road again, taking us towards the river. Oh, they got some schnitzel. We can go down there and get some schnitzel. I just ate. What is the name? Linder Keller.
I've had schnitzel a few times. Uh, it's not my favorite, but every time I come over here, my mom's, my mom and my grandpa are always like, oh, get some schnitzel. I'm like, I've already had schnitzel a lot. <laughs> I mean, they're just like amazed by schnitzel. I'm like, ah, uh, okay. It's like a breaded piece of meat with like almost no flavor, typically. And they always say, oh, well, I don't think you've had it done right then. I've had it like four or five times, so. It's just they love it. They push it. Ah, oh, snipes. The good old sports place, Snipes. They're all over Europe. So here we are basically at the Danube waterfront area. We've got a station right here. And then right over here is the actual Danube River. a lot of museums here especially if you're into music like I said previously Mozart Beethoven but the history about how successful the Austro-Hungarian Empire was something to look into also so I'm assuming the most livable city title also includes living, overall living standard, right? We've got something going on up here. This is the real waterfront. Such as how much does it cost to rent? I mean, this is graffiti on the level of what I've seen in uh, <laughs> Medellin, Colombia. More like the Medellin <laughs> of Europe. Yeah, I imagine cost of living plays a big factor in that calculation. Here's the river. We're just going to kind of cruise around here and show you what it looks like down here. That's a fast moving river, actually. This is where all the high rises are because they have a city ordinance in Old Town. You can't go any higher than five stories in most places, and in some places you can't even go any higher than two stories. I really think at this point, you get the idea about Vienna, it is a nice place. Nice little riverfront. Alright. Back up in here. So, I just also wanted to tell you guys some updates on my travels. Today I ended up uh, getting a fever. So I took half the day off. <laughs> Not half, four hours but maybe less actually. It was hot, I had a fever, two blisters on my feet. Been moving pretty quickly, but assuming that I'm back to full health tomorrow, I plan to make it over to Slovakia, which will be like basically my 60th country, from what I can tell. Depends on whether or not I can consider Panama a visit because <laughs> I did visit Panama twice but it was layovers but uh yeah from there I intend to go to Budapest but I've heard that this weekend they're having the Grand Prix 
just going to be really busy. I did get some Asian soup. That helped me. Wonton soup. It was so hot. I think it burned my throat, which was good because whatever was causing me a little bit of uh, irritation, hopefully I zapped it. We'll see how I sleep tonight. If I sleep good tonight, that'll be outstanding because then I'll be on to Slovakia. It is Thursday. Like June 28th, this old G ride. As you can tell, this is like the center of it all right here. I keep coming back through here. I really need to go that way a little bit. Go ahead. If you wanted to take the train here, it's called Stevens Platz. So you can come right here to the Stevens Platz station. Frozen yogurt. Last time I was here, I went to the right, and I know there's a lot of stuff over there. That's why I'm kind of trying to get over there. People, they just can't get enough of that. I don't, I don't blame them. They're actually quite excited. I don't know how it looks on camera. Kind of avoiding going in this direction right now with the sun being so intense, but I think it's going to cool down here in the next 30 minutes. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you like videos and you want to get notified when I'm on my next one, you guys can actually click the link to sign up for the newsletter. I'm, I've got a newsletter. You just go to our website, islandhopper.tv, sign up. I think like once a week I'll give updates, at least while I'm traveling. When I'm not traveling, I won't send it out as often. Because that is one way to communicate with you guys outside of YouTube uh, notifications most of it will be videos maybe some links to a website my main goal is not to annoy anyone other than give them what they're looking for which is travel content from around the world Last time I was here, that I really enjoyed. So it's to the west of the old town square where Stevens Platz is. Instead of going east, you go west. Looks like we got a lot of nightclubs over here, but we've got this really cool structure right there is where we're walking towards. This is where you do your shopping. Fendi, Giorgio Armani, Gucci. So you see this beautiful building here. It's actually a Spanish riding school for horses. So you learn how to do it Spanish style. I mean, it's amazing. Vienna is right here. You know, it's like on a river. If there was an American city that it kind of reminded me of, I would say Kansas City. It's like super landlocked, on a river, in the middle of Europe. 
not near an ocean anywhere. I don't even know if you could take a boat from here to the ocean. But there's some ancient ruins of some sort. CC Museum. It's always good when the fountains are going. But anyway, guys, let's take this opportunity to finish the video here. There's a lot of museums when you come here, so you're going to need to do some research on the museums that you're going to want to visit. Maybe do a show with Mozart, music, or Beethoven, or the opera. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and subscribing. Check out that newsletter on islandhopper.tv, and we'll see you guys on the next one. From Bratislava.